Welcome to Shav's technical series. In today's session, we'll discuss principal component analysis and its usage. So we in the analytics discussion, and in the previous sessions, we did uh, time series analysis, Dickey Fuller test, verified if it is stationary series or not. We skipped Arma and Gauge models. Then we did covariance analysis, and today we'll discuss principal component analysis and its benefits and why do we need it. So we'll go back to the Shrav's website. So you could click on the portfolios by going to the portfolio screen on the side hamburger bar, click on portfolios, it shows the portfolios. So today we'll discuss the Magnificent 6 portfolio. The Portfolio consists of these six talks, Amazon, Google, Apple, Microsoft, NVIDIA, and Tesla. And then we performed principal component analysis as well as covariance analysis. Now, we'll discuss why do we need principal component analysis. If you look at the covariance analysis in the covariance, covariance discussion, we talked about the covariance metrics and correlation metrics. These metrics would make sense if there are one or two assets in the portfolio. But once we start adding more of them, in this scenario we have six, the metrics becomes too large and it's difficult to visualize the data. Now we want to understand if all of these assets are contributing to the variance to the portfolio, so you need them, or you can remove some assets and still achieve the same risk reward. So for that, we do principal component analysis. For example, if you look at the expected returns versus risk for this portfolio, Google returned this amount for this risk. The risk is on the y-axis and the expected returns return is on the x-axis. So Google had a reasonable return at a lower risk. Amazon, uh, Apple and Microsoft have a higher return at their same risk as Google. So, you know, recently Google faced some headwind, so the stock has fallen. And then Amazon has written a little less than Apple and Microsoft, but the risk is higher. So volatility with respect to Amazon is higher. So you might wonder, do you really need to put Amazon in the mix? Why can you just use these and Google? So then we have Tesla here. Tesla has given higher return, but at a higher risk, highly volatile stock. Then we have NVIDIA here, much higher returns at a lower risk compared to Tesla, but higher risk compared to other stocks. So with six assets, you can look at the look at it a little easier, but once you have like 10, 20, 30 assets, it's really difficult to visualize the data points on a graph. And then we discuss the covariance and covariance graph. Now using principal component anal analysis, we can reduce the uh, dimensions in the portfolio and graphically represent the principal components. So I'll go quickly to the principal component analysis page. Here, we did principal components analysis of the portfolio. This is a scatter plot, uh, cumulative returns plot. So this is the graph we are interested in. Now, if you look at the graph, you see there's one component, two, three, and maybe third one. After the first three components, it doesn't really matter if you put these two or you can remove them because they don't give much variance in the portfolio. If there's no much variance, it means no risk, no reward, so not much returns. So using this, you can try, uh, you can uh, think if you can reduce the number of assets to much lower number. In our case, we have six. Maybe you could reduce to just four or maybe just three. So principal component analysis provides you this graph based on which you can uh, decide if you really need 
these many components are just reduced to a couple of components like for example in this case just four components since major variance is explained by just four components so then you have to go back to your assets try to reduce to four check if if that portfolio returns better than at the lower risk so to do that you can go to the returns tier sheet and then see the annual returns versus annual volatility once you reduce the number of assets see if you still get the same annual return at uh, somewhat lower annual volatility so it's a so using principal component analysis you can do that uh, the number of assets reduction if the portfolio has too many assets. So I'll quickly go through the math of the principal component analysis. We go to the PCA page, principal component analysis. So as I explained, when you have a portfolio of N assets, you'll get NC2 and combination of two uh, covariance metrics, which was shown here. So you have, you'll get two assets at a time. So this is a covariance matrix. So you get two assets at a time in a metric. So it, it goes very high if there are too many assets. So that's about covariance analysis. Then in PCA, in Shrav's case, we, we need to know the number of components that we need to use. As shown in this graph, we kept one, two, three, four, five, six. We kept all the components. PCA, when you reduce the dimension, you can decide how many components you want to show in the graph. In Shrav's case, we keep all the components, all the assets which are in the portfolio. We have six principal components here because there are six assets in the portfolio. So we discussed the covariance and correlation matrices in the covariance and covariance analysis discussion. So I'll skip that. To perform PCA analysis, we need certain uh, matrices. So we start with the covariance matrix, which is this one. We discuss the covariance matrix, covariance matrix of the daily returns. And then we, using principal component analysis, we have to find orthogonal vectors v1, v2, such that this equation is satisfied. An orthogonal matrix or an orthogonal vector is something when you multiply a transform a transform a or equal to an identity matrix then it's called an orthogonal matrix so think of it an orthogonal uh, vector is x and y axis in in coordinate system they are orthogonal to each other so when you multiply the vectors on x and y vectors on x and, x and y using this equation, you'll get an identity matrix. So we won't go much into the math of this uh, matrices. Here we'll just focus on how we get the eigenvectors and eigenvalues for daily returns. So we have daily returns. For those daily returns, we already calculated the covariance matrix then we'll put that in this equation and try to find v1, v2 vectors which are called eigenvectors and lambda1, lambda2 which are called eigenvalues. So once we satisfy this equation and get v1 and v2, lambda1, lambda2, based on that we get the graph we showed here in uh, PCT analysis, this graph, and then based on this graph, we can cut off if certain components. In our case, if we really want to reduce the dimensions, maybe we can reduce, we remove one, 
maybe five, and then just take four. So now we don't know which asset to remove, so we have to remove one at a time, perform the analysis and see if uh, the once we remove an asset, the covariant, uh, the other five, because we started with six, see if the five assets give better variance. So that way we can reduce the number of assets in a portfolio and do cost benefit analysis because the more assets we have in a portfolio, more rebalancing has to be done, more trading costs, etc. If we are not getting the returns or if we are not, if we are not exposing the portfolio to more risk, that means there's no more uh, there's no more return. So there's no point in having more assets in the portfolio. So we'll quickly go through the code uh, for generation of this uh, variance uh, PCA. So this is the IPython notebook. So this is the IPython notebook. It's updated to it's uploaded to GitHub. So we we'll start with the bunch of imports. Then using uh, we'll go to the get PC analysis function where we pass multiple shafts IDs. In this case we are passing gold and S&P 500. We passed gold and S&P 500. We did a bunch of uh, Python code here. We'll focus directly on the PCA analysis part. Using so we get the we get the daily returns, percentage daily returns of each ID. So we get percent daily returns of uh, gold and S&P 500. And then we set our uh, number of components that uh, PCA function should return to two. Then this is scikit-learn PCA method. So we require two components. Then to PCA.fit function, we pass the daily returns data. And then we plot the figure. So if we go back to the IPython notebook, we get the principal components. For gold and SP, both components are giving a reasonable variance. So that means since there's variance given by both the assets, that means both the assets are contributing to the returns. So we can keep both of them. Now as a quick test, what I did is we, I removed S&P 500 from the list of uh, IDs and I passed gold in both the cases. In this case, they are, it's a gold and gold in the same portfolio. So the second asset won't contribute to any variance because it's the same asset. So we're doing a quick test of our understanding. So when I pass gold multiple times, there's only one component which explains the complete variance. So in this scenario, say for example, if you if you bought a gold future and also you're buying a GLD, gold ETF, then your portfolio has two ty different types of assets, a future and a GLD. Then there's no point uh, because it's the same return. So now we have to discuss, uh, think uh, which is cheaper to hold, a GLD or a gold future. And then you put all your money in a single asset type, either ETF or gold future. So, so that way, if you have your daily returns, you, of your portfolio, you can analyze and see if you're really gaining anything by adding multiple assets to the portfolio. So as a quick recap, to do the principal component analysis, you have to go to the portfolios page, which is in the data section, or in the analytics section, you can go to PCA page, and then select an asset, uh, select a portfolio, in that page. So for example, Magnificent 6, if I select in the principal component analysis page, I get the principal component analysis for that portfolio.
So with that, I'll close today's session. If you have any questions, please reach out in the YouTube channel or in the documentation page link here.